Money Sign Eric here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be eating the best Korean barbecue in New York City. If you guys would like to watch this video with me, you can check me out on Twitch at Money Sign Eric. We'll be doing a watch party as soon as this video is uploaded. Let's get started. What up, guys? Viv and I are going on a date today, which is like what all my fucking videos are because Viv brings in the views. Normally, I would just not record anything or film anything throughout the day and just show you guys the dinner. But I thought to myself, like, hey, maybe I should show you guys what I do on a Friday morning, afternoon, whatever. Chat, I think a lot of you guys would be really surprised by how much work I actually do and how busy I really am. Currently, the time is 2.22 p.m. Uh, make a wish. Here's the fit, by the way. I like the fit. Okay, so. <laughs> What's up, my sign Eric and uh, Viv and uh, Sharon, if you're watching. Viv and I are actually gonna go to the gym. I mean, I mean we do get cardio done in bed, but. Oh. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's enough for me. <laughs> it's not enough for you because you don't move, bro. It is now time to go to the gym. <laughs> I just want to play Valorant, bro. So here's the plan for today. I have not been consistent in the gym, so I'm just going to be doing some light exercises to get myself back into it. And Viv is doing like yoga stretches and she's gonna go for a run on the treadmill. It just kind of sucks because my body doesn't really feel warmed up for the gym. I should have played like a death match or two. I can break you out into a sweat. Yeah. Oh, my hands hurt. My callus. Where's your callus? In the making. Oh, it's probably for my rings. You guys aren't gonna believe this, but I napped for like two hours. Now we are on our way to rib number seven, and we're gonna be late because I was napping, so my bad. Are you excited to eat though? Yes. I'm so fucking hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day. We are in K-Town now, and you just gotta walk down 33rd Street. You'll see it on the right. And uh, well, I guess it also fucking depends on where you're coming from, but. We are eating Korean barbecue, and you guys are probably wondering why not Jongro? Because we found a better place. It's called Rib Number no. Seven. I've actually been here a few times before, but they recently released their omakase sets. You can get it at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. I'm not sure why those times specifically, but you do have to make a reservation ahead of time, which is what I did. And we're just going to eat. Here is what the menu looks like. This is the omakase menu. It is $130 per person, and you cannot order anything a la carte until the end of the meal, if you wish to do so. They also prepared for us a little meat board, uh, charcuterie, char charcuterie, whatever. Uh, this is the selection of meats that they chose. It's A5 Wagyu from the Miyazaki Prefecture in Japan, marinated short ribs. This was fucking fire. Uh, prime chuck, this is probably my least favorite, but it was still very good. And of course, two slices of prime ribeye. Now, as you guys can guess, the A5 Wagyu was my absolute favorite cut, and it was just so fucking delicious. But don't get me wrong, every single meat that they picked out for us was phenomenal. The quality of it was amazing, and I absolutely loved the way that they prepared and cooked each slice of meat. Like, bro, look at the fucking marbling on this shit, man. 
It honestly looks better raw than it does after it's cooked. Anyway, the first item to come out from the omakase menu is the Yuko Toast, which is beef tartare with a bunch of different vegetables and radishes and garnishes on a slice of toast with some sauce on it. And this toast was an absolutely great way to get started with the omakase. Yuko Toast, first bite, here we go. They have Yuko here as an appetizer, and it's one of Viv and I's like, favorites, but it is so much better on the toast. Like, so much better. Cheers. Okay, for this part, I was just going to let the Temple of Time Maple Store music run while you watch the Wagyu cook. But I was straight up nutting on this shit, and I just had to talk over it. Because I gotta let you guys know what, like, look at this fucking marbling, bro. When I saw this in real life, I actually, like, made an audible moaning sound. Are you shitting my dick, bro? Like, look at that marbling. Tell me that is not the finest fucking meat you have ever seen in your goddamn life. A5 Wagyu at rib number 7 omakase. Do you see this fat, man? That fat is worth $30. I would guzzle on that shit like it was fucking steaming. Jesus Christ, dude. They got some salt and wasabi on the side as well. And we also asked for some caviar on top. That's some bougie shit, bro. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Ooh. Here is the A5 Wagyu with some caviar as well as wasabi. First bite, here we go. Mmm, yeah, that's better than Kote 5. Yeah, that is way better than Kote 5. Mmm. Here's an issue that I normally have with A5 at restaurants, and it's that they don't cook it well. Like, they ruin the meat by either overcooking it. Actually, that's it. They just overcook it. It was perfect. Super buttery super fatty and it was not overcooked which i cannot stress enough how much that pisses me off yeah but this this man knows how to cook meat it's fucking good it's fucking good man that's a 10 out of 10 easy look i've, I've had goats a5 wagyu from the omakase and honestly it was nothing special i mean it was good it just like wasn't as rich and buttery as the one here that's fire that's fire God damn. Also, their grilled vegetables have excellent seasoning. And that is Asian excellence. All right, this part isn't that exciting. It's just the vegetables, but I will say they were grilled very well. I mean, as well as you can grill fucking vegetables. And they were actually very well seasoned. Also had some gochujang pepper paste in the middle. Sorry, we ate some of it, so it doesn't look that good. But anyway, moving on to the omakase. After we had the wagyu, we were served shellfish with woodier mushroom, pickled cauliflower, and a special sauce using a Korean seaweed base. Ooh, fancy. This is the scallop with some seaweed sauce as well as a uh, wood ear mushroom. And this is the wood ear on top. First bite. Mm, I'm a big fan of wood ear mushrooms. I love the texture as well as the subtle flavor. Pickled cauliflower is delicious as well. And so is the scallop, like cooked so well. But my favorite part is this sauce. It's like a seaweed sauce, a Korean seaweed sauce. I don't know how they made it, but it tastes delicious. A very seaweedy flavor, no shit. It's also earthy at the same time and it complements the scallop like amazingly. You, like, you can't even tell that you're dipping the scallop in the sauce. It just seems like the sauce is a part of the scallop. Like it's just one entity, really well done. And Viv is allergic to scallops, so I ate hers. <laughs> Next up on the menu, we got the prime ribeye. My only complaint about this cut was that it was not bigger. God damn, look at this. Viv is cutting it in half, and I am telling you, these dudes know how to cook meat. I would trust my meat with them. They know how to handle it. Look at that color. So perfect, man. Gallagher's could never. And this is the unmarinated ribeye. Look at how they cook this. First bite, here we go. So good. Last bite. Mm. Mm. I'm typically a purist, 
I don't like dipping my meat in anything but salt, but the wasabi here is really, really good. After the ribeye, you're actually served another ribeye except on a hand roll. The head chef comes in and actually prepares it for you. It's rice, wasabi, onions, and then the slice of the ribeye on top. And the twist on this, twist my balls, the twist on this is that he puts on uni on top. And for those of you that don't know what uni is, it is sea urchin. It is this orange tongue looking thing that you see right here. And then he tops it off with some caviar, the same caviar that we ate with the Wagyu. I have never had meat like this, and I was also a little bit skeptical because honestly, I am not the biggest fan of uni, although I have not had too much experience eating it. So this is a prime ribeye hand roll with a soy sauce that they made, as well as uni and caviar on top. Y'all know how I feel about uni. Not a fan, but I'm hoping this is going to uh, change my mind. First bite, here we go. That was the first time in my life where I enjoyed uni, and it was way better than sushi now because I was uni. That was, that was actually delicious. I thought I didn't like uni because the one at sushi nakazawa tasted like butthole, but that one was like rich, creamy, like a little ocean brine. It was fire. It was fire. And then the pickled onions underneath it were putting in work. They were cutting through. So nice. I agree. It tasted like the sea with some meat in my mouth. I like it. After eating the roll, the next item on the omakase menu was the beef chuck steak. And honestly, this was my least favorite part of the omakase. Do not get me wrong, it was still delicious. It's just compared to everything else, it was, lack it was lacking something. I'm not sure what, but it just didn't have the same bam, like whoosh, kadoo, that the other meats had. So the way they prepare this is by cooking it rare, like we like. And then that red uh, sauce underneath is actually some gochujang paste that they make. And then on top, they like to put on some chimichurri. And of course, it's served with salt and wasabi on the side. And that is the rib number seven beef chuck steak. This is the beef chuck steak with gochujang, chimichurri, salt, wasabi, all of that. First bite, here we go. That is fucking delicious, man. Every single bite here has been perfect. It is exactly the way I like my meat cooked. I like the fat dripping. I like it juicy. I like it rare. I'm loving the salt and the wasabi as well. Here's a chimichurri. Gonna eat this with the salt. Paris bite. Mmm, mmm. That's good fucking sauce, too. Mmm, mmm, dude. Every single bite has been a 10 out of 10. We're not even done with omakase, but we both agree it's better than koto omakase, for sure. We then had a palate cleanser in the form of a octopus salad with mango, romaine lettuce, and gochujang sauce. And for those of you that don't know, gochu means pepper in Korean, but it can also mean penis. A momentary break from meat. This is octopus in gochujang sauce with romaine lettuce and mango. So this is the mango, romaine lettuce, and the octopus all in one bite. First bite, here we go. Really good. Oh, you like the sauce? It's like a soup. It's like a kimchi kumbu soup. But it's also very refreshing. The sauce is like cold, and the octopus. This octopus is just octopusy. It's just the uh, seafood meat. I love the texture and consistency. And here is the last meat cut on the omakase. It is the marinated short rib, which is also known as kalbi, for those of you that know. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of kalbi, so I was pleasantly, actually very pleasantly surprised by how this tasted. It's not like any kalbi that I had, I didn't think it was over marinated. And what they did with it was garnished it with whole grain mustard seeds, as well as parsley butter. And you're thinking, what the fuck, right? I, I, I did too, until this man fucking brimstone ulted the meat, melted the butter, and also charred the seeds. And I was like, okay, I see where you're going with this shit. And it turned out pretty fucking well. I really liked the garnishes that they put on top and I thought it was one of the best kalbi that I've ever had in my life. Last but not least, the marinated short rib with parsley butter on top. Literally dripping right now. Like my girlfriend's first bite, here we go, baby. Mm, oh my God, that was amazing. White grain mustard on top with the parsley butter. 
and the, and the mustard got toasted a little bit, the seeds. Jesus Christ, that was delicious. And this is the last bite of the omakase. Cheers. Oh my God, that's gotta be the best kaibi I've ever had. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It wasn't like too over marinated. It wasn't very overpowering. It was like just the right amount. Babe's not even a fan of Kyrie. That shit was perfect. Oh, it smells good. And uh, to top it off, we are having a noodle dish with some side dishes called, uh, the noodles are called pansang. I've never had it before, so it's my first time. We also got some panchans, like this kimchi right here, radish. And whatever the fuck this is. It's good though. First bite, here we go. Cheers. Mmm. I've definitely eaten that before. It's a familiar taste and it's very good. More delicioso. Mm -mm -mm. What'd you say? I like this place. I think their panchan is like very, very good. You guys know Viv has like super high standards. If she says she likes the place, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I like all the places that I typically go to, but Viv has a lot more higher standards. So if she really likes a restaurant, it's pretty good, man. Forget the Michelin guide. All you need is Viv and her opinion. And the broth is beefy, I like it, man. This broth is delicious. It's like a beef bone broth, I'm pretty sure. Like I say, warms the heart and the balls. I don't know if that soup was MSG or Korean excellence, but it was delicious. A little bit of both, eh? A little bit of both, yeah, it was delicious, man. The very last item that they have on the omakase is their homemade black sesame ice cream with crumbles on the bottom, crushed sesame on top, and red bean jelly with black sugar that's been torched. Also known as yangge in Korean, if you guys know this. This is one of my favorite snacks. I used to eat this all the time as a kid. First bite, here we go. Oh wow, mm. They coat it with brown sugar and then torch it, so it's like a creme brulee. It's so good. I've never had yangge this sweet. They know how to do meat and dessert. The house ice cream. Black sesame with sesame seeds on top and some crumble on the bottom. First bite, here we go. So good, oh my god. This ice cream is fuego. I really fuck with the dessert here. The crumble tastes like kosumi, which is a Korean cracker that I like, loved as a kid. This is kosumi, for those of you that know. This is the best Korean barbecue omakase I've ever had. When I come back to rib number seven from the omakase, um, we'll talk about that outside. All right, time to go home. Normally, Viv and I will go to like Gray Street or Waffle Labs or some shit, but we ate quite a bit and they also had dessert at the end of the omakase. So we're just going home, unless you want dessert. I kind of want Waffle Labs. Okay, let's go. All right. The tiny one. Okay, okay, let's go, let's go then. All right, never mind. we're getting Waffle Labs. Sorry. I'm not complaining though. Okay, but Viv, thoughts on rib number seven's omakase? I actually thought that it was the best Wait, wait, it sounds like you're reading off script. What the fuck? I actually think that was like the best omakase experience I've had in New York City. Like better than sushi, right? Yeah. Yeah, wait, dude. Okay, I was thinking this while eating it, but I'm like, sushi omakase is like not that worth compared to it like... Is, it is worth. It, you just have it. I know it's worth. I just don't think like... For the price, it's like... Oh. It's like hard to Yeah, it's hard to justify. The sushi omakase yeah. is so fucking expensive. The beef, like, that was delicious. I know, that A5 was so and fucking like, good. I think because, I don't know, like, their idea and thought that they put into, like, every single dish and, like, why they did so and how mm -hmm. the chef actually, like, made a lot of just the panchan and, like, every single detail, it was just really nice. And it was really good. Damn, you should have your own fucking YouTube channel. God damn, you worded that way better than I did. Yeah, but yeah, that shit was fucking delicious, like man. Nostalgic eating. Some yes, of the food. yes. You know, being Korean, no fucking shit. I mean, being Korean, it just a lot of the flavors were really reminiscent of old things that I had eaten, and a lot of it was also new spins on flavors that I have been tasting like for my entire life. It was delicious. It really was. Yes. I'm gonna give that meal a ten out of ten. 
Yeah, I'm gonna give it a 9.5. Okay, that's that's probably the highest rating that Viv has ever given, like on this fucking YouTube channel. But my question is, is would you go back there for the omakase? And, and here's here's my thoughts. I don't think I would go back to rib number seven for the omakase because if I'm going to rib number seven, I would just get like their normal, you know, meat options, you know, because I want to pig out, I want to eat fast, and I want to like order other appetizers. The only reason I would go, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, chat. The only reason I would go back to rib number seven is if Viv and I had like a super special day or like event planned and we just wanted to like ball out and oh eat. Hey, how you doing, man? Oh yeah, God. it is definitely fucking worth it. I think it's worth the price for the experience and also the flavors, but it's not like, I'm not, you know, I'm not bougie like that. Like if I could afford it, I would go every day, you know? Sometimes you just want to sit down and pig out. You know, you can't really pig out during an omakase. I will say though, the portion size and like, you know, how much food they actually give you is perfect. I left feeling very satisfied, not super full. And honestly, people with lower stomach capacity probably don't need all of that. And for dessert, Viv and I walked down a block to the food court in K-Town. And to get to the Waffle Labs, all you gotta do is walk up the stairs that you see when you walk in. And it's right there in the corner. As the name implies, they sell waffles and they're damn good at making their waffles. It's mochi waffles with a variety of different flavors. Viv and I like the enjoy me the best, so that's what we go for. Check them out. We're just out on the street right now because there's no seating in the food court, but we're just going to be eating the uh, the waffle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing about this waffle is that it's a mochi waffle, so the texture is a bit different than what you would normally expect. Absolutely delicious though, and it's also injomi flavored. So there's like sweet whipped cream over here, and injomi powder in between with a few nuts and condensed milk. And condensed milk, delicious man. And for those of you that don't know what injomi is, mmm. Mm. Soybean powder. Mm. But it's like a Oh my god. Mm. It's a Korean soybean powder that you would normally put on rice cakes. But my goodness, if this isn't making me bust enough right now. Mmm. Yeah, that's fucking delicious. All the flavors come perfectly together. It's sweet but light. There's a bit of nut nuttiness to it that isn't like semen nut, but like almonds and whatnot that soybean like powder fucking phenomenal bro phenomenal mm. 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 Oh, I all the whipped cream mm. chat if you guys are in New York City check out waffle labs thank you guys so much for watching you probably expected maybe one two or three Korean barbecue restaurants but I only did rib number seven because it was just so extensive and detailed and I hope that's okay. But if you guys want more food reviews or like restaurant reviews, please drop down some suggestions in the comments and I will consider it. But yeah, I would definitely recommend going to rib number seven if you guys are in New York, if you want some quality Korean barbecue and you don't wanna go all the way to Flushing. And that's all I gotta say for the outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. As usual, join my Discord server. You guys can also check out my Twitch channel and of course, my Venmo is at Money Sign Eric. New video next Tuesday, as always, and I'll see you guys then. Peace.